You got, got Eve, Eve here. here. The Hungry Hollow has what you want. Cuckoo's Nest Challenge. <laughs> it always fills me up, and I'm always hungry. This is our Big Daddy, John. Are you also known as the Big Daddy? Depends on who you talk there to. There you go. <laughs> We're here at Frank's Steakhouse. Best place in America. It's almost like a Fred Flintstone steak. <laughs> it's really a lot of fun. That was bigger than my first baby. <laughs> Piatto is the most delicious pizzeria this side of Italy. <laughs> there's pizza, and then there's designer pizza. Cheesy, gooey. It makes me feel good. You're talking about it so much. I want to get it. some, too. I'm, I'm it. joining you. I'm John Catucci. Listen, I'm no chef, but I know great food when I eat it. And these joints are cooking it right. That's why I'm telling you, you gotta eat here. Hungry Hollow is an old nickname for Georgetown. It's also the name of this barbecue spot where they've created something called the pork skit sandwich. That's beef brisket and pulled pork on a bun. Yep, that'll fill my Hungry Hollow. You gotta eat here. Whenever we feel like having meat, we come to the Hungry Hollow. Tender, juicy, super smoky, real southern cooking. It's just like having it down in the south. Smoker plate! Culmination of many meats put together. Smoked chicken, pulled pork. Your teeth get into that meat, and it's just heaven. I've eaten everything here. And what do we have here? A hillbilly deluxe pulled pork hot dog. The flavors are just bam, it's right there. It just dances in your mouth. Yes, that's it. <laughs> Pork skirt sandwich. What's going on, man? Brisket, pulled pork together. That's a smart move. <laughs> I didn't get fat by accident. <laughs> it's got a little bit of a spice to it. Are you okay with the spicy sure stuff? Sure, I do spice. Ah, you're better than me, Joe. That's what I hear. Easy. <laughs> we are making the pork skit sandwich, and it's big. How big? A little or not that big. But it's got to fit in your mouth, John. Well, you there we go. You don't know my mouth, sir. <laughs> We're going to rub these babies. This is the basic here. Some salt, brown sugar. We got pepper, cayenne, and then we've got paprika, garlic powder, onion powder. Uh, this is for the pork here? Correct. Is it uh, bone-in shoulder? Bone-in pork butt. And then over here on the brisket, to distinguish, we've got a cumin and coffee. Take these pieces of meat. We'll wrap them in a plastic wrap. These go in the fridge? Yeah. This brisket's been in the fridge for how long? It's been overnight. And it smokes for how long? 16 hours. And the pork smokes for? Pork butt goes in for 18 hours. Oh, wow. While these are smoking away, what can we do? We're going to make the pimento cheese, cheddar cheese, jack cheese, some grated onion, pimentos, mayonnaise, cream cheese, pepper. OK. I'm guessing you use a mixer for this, right? Yes, we did. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Take the pork and the brisket out of the smoker now and slice it up and pull it. <laughs> oh, wow. That's as tender as a woman's heart. Oh my gosh. Yes. What's going on with this brisket? Slice it up a little thick. I don't need it on a sandwich. You can just put it right in my mouth if you want. Put the uh, brisket into a pan, warm it up. Got a little bit of whiskey barbecue sauce here. We're going to put in pork here in the cast iron pan. You getting hungry yet? I'm starving. <laughs> going to warm up our pretzel bun here. What kind of barbecue sauce is that? That one has a Kansas City barbecue sauce. Okay. A little on the sweet side. OK, we're ready. So we'll take our bun off, and let's assemble. Do it. A little pork on there, coleslaw on top, tomato cheese. It's a very popular topping. Some french fries, hush puppies. This is your? Pork skid sandwich. How do you eat this? Come on. Oh my god, I'm going to try and grip, squeeze, and bite. Smush down, elbows out, lean over so it doesn't land on my shirt. This might be the messiest sandwich I've ever eaten. That's how you're supposed to eat it. Tons of cheese in there. It's creamy, it's tangy. Pulled pork and the brisket are just beautiful. Tender, juicy. What are your napkin costs? <laughs> so when you can't decide between the brisket and the pulled pork, you combine the two. Like this. All of it. A beautiful sandwich. Redneck poutine. Why are you feeling so awesome? Because I have the redneck poutine. <laughs> Will you feel awesome after? <laughs> I love the atmosphere in here. Everyone is so friendly. You got the pigs all over the place. Large selection of pigs. No shortage of pigs. Burn-in sandwich. Double the smokiness. And double the goodness. Meat with that sweet. You know, sweet meat. Big Daddy Burger. Do you know what the Big Daddy is? Something that you have quite a bit of. Yeah, it's huge. About the size of my head. Were you frightened? Yes, I was. That's a <laughs> big burger. It is a big burger. The Big Daddy Burger. Another large, ridiculously sized sandwich here? Correct. Yes. Ground chuck, add cayenne, ground pepper, thyme, a little bit of salt, and some garlic powder. Okay, let's blend it up, form it into a nice, even patty. That looks pretty good, John. Yeah. That looks pretty good. Do we need two of them for this burger, we yes? We need two, yes, we okay. do. Cut some bacon from our smoked pork belly. Now we'll deep fry that. <laughs> fry it up. Take this first patty here, second patty. Take the pulled pork, put it in the pan. Are you also known as the Big Daddy? Depends on who you talk there to. There you go. <laughs> We're going to give her a flip now. Put some of this uh, cheddar cheese on here. Toast the bun, put the bacon out. All right. OK, I see what's happening here. I think we're ready. OK. See, this I can deal with. <laughs> Little pork on there. Let's give it a little sauce here. Homemade coleslaw. Please do. Our onion ring. There we go. This is our Big Daddy, John. 
It's, it's so big that it's hard to eat as a mouthful. You actually taste everything. All those flavors combined in one bite. I don't know how you make that look pretty. It's all a mess, but everything <laughs> works. It just, everything works. Those burgers are fantastic. So juicy. The pulled pork, again, is just so delicious. And then you got a nice crunch from the deep fried bacon. That's a great burger. It's massive. Yeah. If you finish that burger, we call you Big Daddy. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> Tell me about Mike. Oh, Mike is, is great. He makes you feel like your family. He makes you feel like you're welcome. It feels like home. Is it better than home? Yes, the food is better. Pulled chicken dinner. Pulled chicken dinner. It, it seems like a lot of food. It is a lot of food. Cuckoo's Nest Challenge! <laughs> the Cuckoo's Nest Challenge. It's a lot of fries. Yeah. Some would say too many fries. I would say that. Wings and rib combo. Those might be the biggest wings I've seen. They are. Homemade cornbread. Can't get that anywhere else here in town. This stuff is good. Wings and ribs. Because one or the other is not enough. No, no. Now, John, we're going to make some cornbread. Flour. The cornmeal there, sugar, a mm -hmm. little bit of salt, bacon powder. And I'm just going to whisk up the eggs here a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, let's pour the eggs in there. Your buttermilk, canola oil. And we'll give it a little stir. No lumps? Is that the key no for lumps. this? Smooth as you can. Put it into the cast iron pan and then place it into the oven for about 20 minutes. What do we have here? Our dredge for our chicken wings. Flour, oregano, some thyme, some garlic powder, some mustard powder, Cajun seasoning, a little bit of pepper a little bit of salt and some paprika nice. and celery salt. Dip them in the water here yep. and just put them back in again. Double dredge is for the extra crispiness? Correct. This is some big wings. We have the biggest wings in town. Do you? We do. Oh, my goodness. We're going to take this over to deep fryer and throw it in for approximately nine minutes. Great. Now we're going to cut the ribs, John. A similar rub to the brisket and the pork? Uh, just the pork. Smoke for four hours. We're going to put them onto the grill. What sauce are you using for this? The whiskey one? I'm using the whiskey barbecue. Yep. yep. Put a little bit of honey on them and we'll let them rest for a minute. Wings are good? Wings are great. Put the fries down and we'll do the ribs, the wings down over here. Cornbread's ready? It's ready. Put a cornbread in here. Now we'll get our mac and cheese. Ooh, that's some uh, cheesy mac and cheese there. So what do we have here? Our ribs and our wings, the mac and cheese, and cornbread. Chicken wings are very juicy. They have an amazing seasoning on them. Ribs? Oh, that's my favorite. You don't even have to chew it. Wow. That's a great rib. I love the way you finish it off. It's got a little bit of heat, and then you just put that little honey on there. Cornbread we go. It's just perfect. Little crust on the outside, and it's still light. How can you not love cornbread? <laughs> okay, wing. It was so yummy. Nice and juicy, and so crispy. That double dredge on there just really adds to that crispiness. Wings, ribs, mac and cheese, cornbread. I gotta say it faster so I don't think about how much food I'm actually eating. Wings, ribs, mac and cheese, cornbread. It's still a lot of food. You gotta eat here. Greg's has been around probably as long as I have. 22 I, years? 23 20, years? Yeah, 22, 23 years. <laughs> the oldest steakhouse in New England. Good portions. Yes. Fresh. Yeah. I'm getting hungry. Yeah. You sound it. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> These are zucchini, summer squash, and red onions. We take a little of the au jus that we made. Then we pour it right there. Baked potato, nice and crisp skin, and that is our prime rib. New England's finest. Oh, the cut is just so tender. Very flavorful, savory. It just went down so smoothly. It's like butter. That's a beautiful piece of beef, man. You don't even need a knife for this thing. It's just gorgeous. You get the nice, tender beef on the inside that's just so flavorful. Mm -hmm. And then you get the beautiful texture and the crunch from all those herbs. That jus just adds that extra little something. Oh, it's just so beautiful. We've been coming here for 10 years. Oh, close to 20 years. Over 40 years. It's the people, I think, that make the place. Chicken palm up. What did you order today? Chicken palm. Look at the way they do it. Look at that presentation. It's fantastic. What's going on, man? I have the scallops. How do they do their scallops? They're good? I won't talk with my mouth full. Delicious. I mean, you just said you weren't going to talk with your mouth full. <laughs> what did you order today? Petite filet and scampi. I love the scampi. Then you get this nice little petite filet. So cute. Yeah, it's look how sweet it is. So cute. You want to bring it home then, Mind thing? ya. We're going to make a shrimp scampi. It's going to come with a petite filet, but we're going to make tarragon butter for our filets. See that chopped onion. Try tarragon, red wine vinegar, and burgundy wine. Do you guys use this butter on all your steaks or just, just the filets? It has no flavor because it's got no fat in it. It's very lean. It's just very lean. Exactly. Okay. And that's why the French do it. We're going to put it into a softened butter, and we just mix it in. Yep. Very Simple. good. Simple. Yeah, yeah, good. And I've got some wax paper over here, which we're going to use. Take it with your hands. We're going to do it the length of the, uh, the paper. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. It will not be fancy. There you Trust go. me. <laughs> now we're going to make like a sushi roll. Is that what's going on? Pretty much. Throw it in the refrigerator till it hardens back up. So right. this is the petit filet. Spice it up with a little salt and pepper. That goes in here now? And that goes in here. High intensity ceramic plated broiler. That's going to sear that steak. While that's doing its oh, thing? While that's doing its thing, we're going to do the shrimp scampi. Put it in the wash, right into the flour. Yep. Then we bring it over to the fry. And we watch it go. So we got butter over here. We've got drawn butter. Throw garlic in here. Lemon juice. Then we just take the shrimp scampi, pour it in. Take some of the parsley. And you've got shrimp scampi, Frank style. Rice pilaf. Then we take the shrimp scampi. Ah, beautiful. Oh, my word. Then we take the steak. we we'll put it over on a toast point. Tarragon butter. And you have shrimp scampi and petite filet mignon. Delicious. That steak is heavenly. Cooked to perfection. Scampi is rich. I love the crust on it. It's delicious. Ah, that's good. I like that. <laughs> that's like old school classic shrimp scampi. It's so garlicky, plump, and juicy. Get a little bit of that tarragon butter on there. That steak is just cooked to perfection. It's got a nice little like crust on the outside, but it's still so tender on the inside. Ah, oh, that's so, so yummy. Mm -hmm. You're not messing around with no it. No messing around at all. I made that with these hands. So you know what the three L's in kindergarten that? Go. Look, listen, and learn. I did that. You did. And you then did lie it. down. <laughs> what did you order today? That's it, chicken marinade. Mm -hmm. Delicious. When I was a younger man, I'd come and eat one meal a day, and that's how I lost all my weight. Frank's Steakhouse Diet. Chicken under a brick. This is a totally new dish. And I thought, hmm, maybe chicken under a concrete paver I could try. What the brick does is it forces it down, reinforces the heat coming up. The chicken is going to be the juiciest chicken you've ever had in your entire life, and I mean that sincerely. This is a half chicken, and we lather it with olive oil, throw some salt and pepper and garlic on it, put it into a hot skillet, put a brick on top of it. This brick is from the original Boston Garden. I got bricks up there from Fenway Park. Get cool bricks. Get cool. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now we're going to flip it. Perfect. That's looking good. How you doing? I'm good. How's that chicken? Chicken's ready. There it is, right there. You take a little mashed potato with it. This is our chicken under a brick. Okay. Great crunch, super tender on the inside. Simple, delicious, and perfect. Mm, that's incredible how juicy that chicken is. That brick keeps it moist, and then you just that beautiful, uh, crispy skin on the outside. Yeah, that's a good way to use a brick. Usually I use bricks in other ways. I do too. You get exactly what you ask for. You want a chicken under a brick? Look, here's a chicken under a brick for you. You gotta eat here. Piatto is the most delicious pizzeria this side of Italy. It just blows my mind that it's in little St. John's Newfoundland. You just can eat the whole thing and not feel gross, and you just want to come back and have it again. It's just so good. What are the world's greatest pizza cities? Well, you've got Naples, Rome, New York, Chicago, St. John's. Hold on a second. Naples, Rome, New York, Chicago, St. John's. 
Piatto makes world-class certified Neapolitan pizza right here in St. John's, Newfoundland. You gotta eat here. Piatto has the best pizza in town. There's pizza, and then there's designer pizza. Cheesy, gooey. Lots of flavor. Me and my wife actually went to Italy. This is the closest thing that you're gonna get. This blows my mind that it's in little St. John's Newfoundland. The Napoli. This is my favorite This pizza. is your go-to. Had you had Neapolitan pizza prior to eating here? No. It's a wood-fired pizza, smoky crust. It blew my mind. It was perfection. Siciliani. The Italian sausage is just so fresh. You just want to roll it up and shove it in your mouth. <laughs> I always get the Stephanie. The Stephanie. Today and almost every day, I have the Stephanie. The caramelized pear, the balsamic, the crispy prosciutto. It's just so good. True Neapolitan pizza. We were the second one to get certified in all of Canada. Oh, very cool. We're going to start off making some really good Neapolitan dough. OK. Take this first bowl of flour yeah. and put it into our big mixing bowl. Then what we're going to do is we're going to put seven ounces of sea salt yeah. into the water. So now we're going to put this in the mixing bowl. So what do you want from this now? We're going to take a little water to mix our fresh yeast. We'll put that in. When we think it's worked in enough, we're going to add the rest of the flour. After 15 minutes, we'll lift that lid and take out another dough baby. What I want to try and do is get this nice and smooth like a dough ball. It's a good looking dough ball. A little flour on her so the cheesecloth doesn't stick. Now we let it proof for an hour, and there we go. So the way we're going to do it, we're going to cut one line, and then we're going to go through and do the balls. It's nice and round. It's nice, smooth skin. Yeah. Take it and put it in the cooler, and we proof it for 24 hours. OK. Well, what's the first pizza we're making today? The Stephanie pizza, caramelized pear and the crispy prosciutto. Great. Need a little bit of oil in here, and then I'm just going to do enough pears to coat the bottom of this pan. OK. We're going to do the same over here with the prosciutto. We don't want to cook them too much, because when we put them on the pizza, we still want them to hold together. Is that prosciutto is looking good to you? Prosciutto is done. We're going to drain it off and let it cool. Just sprinkle a little sugar over it, just help the browning process. Sounds good, yep. I'm gonna strain them now. So now we're ready to make a pizza? It's a Neapolitan way. Which is? We're gonna push the air out of the dough, and we're gonna not touch the rim, because we wanna have a nice cornizione. Put your thumb over top, slide it straight out, and then you're gonna turn it to an open hand. What we wanna try and do is get it to 11 inches. You know what? That one looks really nice. Let's work with this okay, one. Sure. <laughs> we'll start off with olive oil. Take some crumbled goat's cheese, caramelized pears, then we're gonna do crispy prosciutto, the pinch of granite padano. Cooking for how long? 90 seconds. 90 nice. seconds. So, Brian, what's with the photo up there? It's Josephine, who's my mom. If you want to have good luck in your pizzeria, you dedicate your oven to a woman who's meant something in your life. That's very cool. She's cooked. We're gonna cut this next, and then we're gonna drizzle it with balsamic reduction. And this is? Stephanie Pizza, ready to enjoy. Oh, good. The hair is the best part. So sweet and so caramelized, it's delightful. Lots of crispy prosciutto, so you get the little bit of salt that all Newfoundlanders love. That's so tasty. There's such a beautiful combination of flavors. Sweetness from the pears, you get tang from the goat cheese, salty and crunchy from the prosciutto. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> Just that char, that smell, the smoke right in that pizza. You're talking about it so much, I want to get some too. I'm, Eat I'm it. joining you. I just love coming here because of the people. Brian is the sweetest man I've ever met. He hugs you on the outside, and this hugs you on the inside. <laughs> what pizza did you get today? I got the Amante. If you accidentally get one of the banana pepper, you could be in for a surprise. <laughs> These are the meatballs. People call it polpetta all'italiana, which is a mouthful. So much flavor packed into that little meatball. Prosciutto pacci. What is a prosciutto pacci? Delicious cheese wrapped with prosciutto and then baked with this amazing tomato sauce, basically. That's, it's incredible. That sounds incredible. Why don't we do an appetizer? What is it? Prosciutto pacci. We're going to take it and we're going to form a little cross. Then we take a slice of mozzarella. Yeah. And what we're trying to do is create a pocket okay. that's going to hold this cheese, give it a squeeze. We're going to put it in this bowl, and that's what we're going to cook it in. And then we have our tomato sauce. San Marzano tomato sauce, make by hand every day. We want to cover it because it's going to stay in that oven for nine minutes at 900 degrees. OK. Oh, yeah. Bring this into here, a little bit of that sauce, pinch of granite padano, and then let's put a couple basil leaves on this. We're ready to eat. It's got the saltiness that you love, the gooiness that you love, the cheesiness just sort of takes over. So many flavors, just so delicious. <laughs> That's so, so good, man. It's tangy, it's salty. The fiore di latte melts up, and the prosciutto brings that nice salty bite to the whole dish. Oh, I love that. What are we going to do now? I want some dessert. Why don't we try our chocolate hazelnut pizza? So gooey and ooey and chocolatey. Mm. Chocolate hits the warm pizza dough, gets melty. This one we only got four. Yeah, you don't want to share with six people. No. <laughs>
Piatto is the most delicious pizzeria this side of Italy. It's a super spot to come with your friends. You know what, it's just a nice feel. By far my most favorite place to eat. Carne calzone. That's bigger than my forearm. It's a pizza pocket for adults. Chocolate Italiano. Mm, it's like eating a chocolate fudge ball. What is your favorite pizza? Chocolate pizza. The chocolate pizza. It makes me feel good. So the best thing for dessert after pizza is another pizza? Yes, <laughs> that's for sure. We're going to do the chocolate hazelnut pizza. First step is candy some walnuts. Take this honey, we're going to drizzle it all through the air, and then I want you to use your hands to mix it in. But then my honey's going to get all over my hands, though. <laughs> that's the thing, though, right? Like, the joys of cooking. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> when you think you've got it all nicely mixed together, you can start pouring it out onto the tray. Spread it nice and even. How's that look? Looks great. Yeah? Now we're going to pop it in the oven and bake them for 15, 20 minutes. Great. Oh, they look great. Now we just have to let those cool a little. OK. Is this the same dough we've made? Yeah. What are we doing now? We're just going to put a few of these in. OK. And then we're going to put it with icing sugar. OK. <laughs> Get under it first and be gentle. There you go. We're going to cook it in the front of the oven, so we want it right about there. You can see it's starting to caramelize. Yes. Is that what you want? Yeah. yeah. That'll give it that nice little crunch. Okay. So I'd say, let's pull that out now. And we're going to take our chocolate hazelnut. Yeah. We're going to spread it with the back of the spoon. Okay. Some candied walnuts. And these are just going to stick on it. This one we only got four. Yeah, you don't want to share it with six people. No, <laughs> definitely not. This pizza is like the best. It's so gooey and ooey and chocolatey. A little bit chewy, because you know, the authentic Italian crust, but also a little bit of crunch. I like that little crunch from the icing mm. sugar. That's just beautiful. Chocolate hits the warm pizza dough, gets melty, and then you get the nice crunchy walnuts on there. Who would have thought pizza could taste so good? You did. <laughs> you thought it could. That's a great way to end a meal. Oh, I love or it. Or to start a meal. I That's a, Or just it. the meal itself. <laughs> Chocolate and hazelnut go together like cacciucci and pizza. I love it. All of it. I love it, too. I love it. You, you got to eat here. here.